Very well, good. Well, it's good to be with you guys. You know, this is uh, an issue. I thought I'd talk a little bit about it because it hasn't come across. This is actually personal for me. I'm not Asian American, as you probably guessed. Um, uh, but my wife was actually born in Thailand. And so this is very personal. I remember I was reading the news throughout this whole thing, and I explained to her what happened. And um, she looks at me and she says, hell no. You know, she was very upset about this because this is personal. I think that's why a lot of you were engaged, maybe for the first time. How many people, this was their first time engaging in politics? Raise your hand. That's a majority. That's a strong majority of folks. Because it's an issue that affects you at a personal level. Um, I'll tell a little bit about her story because I imagine that many of you have similar stories. My wife was born in one of the worst slums in Thailand on a dirt floor. Her father was in and out of prison, but her mother had the dream of taking her and her, th and her two other sisters to America. She thought that if I can get them to America, there's a possibility that they'll have a better life. Because if they stay in Thailand, they're going to end up being prostitutes, or what, best case scenario, they could be selling fish at the market. But she had a dream that was much bigger than this. She was able to get them to the United States. They settled in New Hampshire, the whitest possible state in America. They were the only non-white family in a little town in the middle of the snow in New Hampshire. And um, my wife's mother, she got a job sewing wedding dresses. My wife grew up six years old. Her mother would be sewing wedding dresses. She would be under the table listening to the radio trying to learn English. That's how she learned. But as it turned out now, you know, 30 years later, um, she was able to stay in school. Her family stuck together, they supported each other. She paid her way through college, and she's had a great career working at companies like Microsoft, Amazon, um, and other tech companies in this area. That is the American dream. And I think that almost everyone in this room, if it's not you, it's a sibling, it's a friend, it's a mother, it's a father, you all have stories like that. Am I right? Yeah. 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 And why is that? How can someone come, as many of you guys did, and as my father did, came from, from Italy at the time when it was very poor, to come here for the dream of a better life? Because you believed, like I believe, that everyone has an equal opportunity. If you come, you work hard, you take care of your family, you study, hopefully something not useless, <laughs> at Evergreen State. And um, which I would just, as a quick aside, I was really hoping I wouldn't do this, but Dan Evans was a former Republican governor who signed up to be on the other team. I'll remind you that he was the person responsible for starting Evergreen State College. So he's been coming up with bad ideas for a long time, and I'm glad that this one he didn't win. But the point is, is that, and this is not only from my experience, from your experience, but there's research and public polling data that bears this out. Asian Americans are one of the most successful groups in the United States because they have the best family structure. They have, they have the most hours studying between kindergarten and 12th grade. They have the best educational achievements in college. And they have some of the highest per capita incomes because they're working hard, they're entrepreneurial, they never quit. And my view is that the campaign for I-1000 was driven by envy because you don't fit into their narrative. In the progressive narrative right now, the idea is that there is an elite kind of white aristocracy that oppresses all minority groups. It's hard to make that case when the most successful group in our state and in our country are non-white. So you're very inconvenient for their plans and their narratives. And I think that if you look at it, rather than trying to figure out, man, what are Chinese Americans doing? What are Filipino Americans doing? What are all these groups doing that's making them successful? Let's copy that and compete. They'd rather say, let's tear those people down. And my wife says, I really hope there doesn't come a day when we have to look at our two kids and say, you know, people that look like mommy have to score higher than people that look like daddy to get into college. That's not right. I grew up, my parents are two lawyers. Do, does my wife have an advantage over me? No, of course not. And that's what happens when you judge people by their group rather than by their individual merits. And I think that's why 
So many people, millions of people over the last 250 years have come to the United States because they said, what matters most is who I am as an individual, how hard I work, and what contributions that I make. And that's really what this boils down to. This campaign that you guys have done, you know, there is a great awakening. All of you are new to the political process. And you, did you have big corporations on your side? No. Did you have KUOW on your side? <laughs> no, you have 27-year-old white millennials calling you racist. Which is ridiculous. I apologize. But you have no big companies, no political experience, no sitting or former governors. All of the odds are stacked against you. And I could see it. You could see it on social media. Well, how, did, how did people treat you on social media? With contempt. Look at these people. They're never going to get it done. But what you did was not only win the campaign, but you overthrew the entire power structure in this state. A hundred people. And that's what it shows. A hundred people that are passionate, that are talented, that are hardworking, that have the Constitution and basic American principles on their side can do anything. And from the bottom of my heart, I did what I could. I wrote some pieces for magazines. I got on the radio. I argued with some knuckleheads on KOW one time. Um, but I did very little. And I, I just wanted to say, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for fighting. Thank you for standing up for these principles. God bless you. You guys did an amazing job.